All right, so this sub 10 liter build is going to have a full 280 millimeter radiator, a full pump res, not a combo block. I'm using PETG Hardline, and we still have room at the bottom for a case fan. Treat. Welcome to Machines More. Because we are building in the Form DT1 reference edition today. This is a custom lid build. I migrated some of the components over from uh, my Lian Lee A4H2O build. And this one's gonna have a bigger radiator and also a little bit more capacity because I get a case fan in here as well. I've got all the hard line bent and fitted into here and I've already leak tested it, but I have to clean out all the components. But while I'm doing that, I think I'm at a good stopping point here. So I'm gonna show you what, you know, what, uh, what it takes to make this work. This is the Form DT1 reference edition. It's a wonderful sub 10 liter case. And we've done a number of videos on this on the channel, but this is my first time building a custom loop in here. And I wanted to take full advantage of the 280 millimeter. So this is a Corsair XR5 and I've paired it with two of Be Quiet Silent Wings 4. But this case makes things really easy to build in. So because I've dry fit and everything already, I can now just kind of take it apart and show you some of the decision-making process here as well as some of the components. Okay, so the front panel comes off. We'll start here at the front of the bill. I just popped off the front cover. And just to give you an idea before I uh, take it off and show you the insides, uh, this is the plumbing to the pump res. This is the return to the pump res, and this is being fed by the outlet of the GPU block. One of the trickier bends that I had to do was this right here because I had to snake it around the power supply and I had to fit it pretty perfectly because there's not really much margin here. You can see it's, it's right up against the uh, front panel of the case. So we'll take this off here and then I can pop off the rad. This is all 12 millimeter PETG. And the fittings I'm using is a combination of Fantex elbows. I had to use an extension here just because I, after I bent it in place, ended up being a little short. And sometimes you gotta use these extenders to make it work. I didn't really wanna have to bend that one again because it was so tricky. So an impetus for this build was in part that I wanted to test out the new Loro block from Mod Ultra. And this is a combo pump res that they've introduced. I was really impressed with their Lobo that I tested in a separate review on the channel. Right here, this is the Mod Ultra Loro. It's a pump res with a DDC pump here with a heat sink. It's a really nice quality and I'll, and I'll throw up some B-roll so you can get an idea of what it looks like on the inside. It does have two fill ports, one and two. This is the exit out of the pump back here and that's gonna feed the CPU block and it's gonna exit the CPU block, feed the GPU block, and the GPU's outlet, like I showed you earlier, is gonna feed the radiator, which will return to the pump res. Underneath here is a 7600X. Now you might, if you've uh, followed my A4H2O build, that was a uh, 7700X, so it's a little bit of a step down. I don't really need that much CPU. It's just a pretty simple gaming build that I use. The uh, rigid tubing, it's an interesting challenge, but it also adds some support like you saw for the radiator. So I do kind of like that aspect of it. The other thing is this is a, because it's 12 millimeter tubing, it's more compact than soft tubing. And so I can make things work in here that wouldn't work necessarily with soft tubing because soft tubing, it's uh, gonna be the, the soft tubing I have is 16 millimeters in diameter. And that would actually end up compressing um, here, I think on this pump block here. This is not, how the case is out of the box, because usually the power supply sits a little bit closer to the front panel. And what I had to do was re-drill the cage and tap some threads uh, to shift the power supply inwards. And I had to leave enough gap for the ATX cable here. Uh, it allows me the ability to run the tubing here for the 280 millimeter radiator. So this is our Corsair 280. It's a rebadged Hardware Labs radiator, so these are really good. 
similar to the 240 that I used in the A4H2O. Well, I've got two Be Quiet Silent Wings 4 Pro here, 140 millimeter. I'm gonna swap these out for the Noctuas when they um, are available. So I built, I actually built in the fill port on my radiator here. It's just like a T fitting and this thumb you know, stop cap can take that off and fill it. It's actually going to be inverted just because I, I think with this type of pump, with a DDC pump, you usually don't want to have it on top of the reservoir. You want it either on the side or on the bottom. So this is all gonna be flipped 180 degrees, but it doesn't really matter when you're building it up. So I, I've oriented it this way just because it kind of looks more uh, logical. Okay, so this is the Optimus Foundation AM, it's an AM4 block, but <laughs> I got this before. AM5 was here, but it's, it's still going to work for AM5. What's really critical with Ryzen 7000 is the heat transfer from the IHS to the cooling system. So I did want to get, well, I'm going to start out with this block here. This was used on my Meshlicious build, which was a 5800X, and that worked pretty well there. And I have a feeling this will be excellent for the AM5 CPU, so we'll see how well that works shortly. GPU is a 3070. Now the interesting thing about this case is you really need to run these small cards because it doesn't have much width, right? The, the T1 V2, the sandwich edition, gives you a little bit more latitude because the card is oriented in the vertical position. This one pretty much it's founders edition cards or narrower cards or close to reference cards without big coolers. So a typical block where the ports exit out the side of the card, that's not gonna work. So this card and probably the 3080 FE are the only ones that'll reasonably work in here. There probably are some other blocks that are small, but because the ports are on the end of the card, uh, sorry, the GPU water block, that's what enables this to work. And because it's also a shorter block, the, the PCB for the 30 series cards are pretty short, the Founders Edition ones anyway, that allows us to mount this uh, pump res here. And the advantage of doing the pump res over having a CPU combo block, which I could have run something like the Mod Ultra Lobo in here, and that would have worked out fine, but those are thicker. So if I'm looking up at the build from the top, this will bring these fittings out a lot more. I have less room to work with, and also there's choked off airflow. So in some sense, this is better for the system as a whole because it allows just more streamlined airflow. And then finally, I, um, I was toying with this position here, but I think I'm gonna put this somewhere in the middle just because the airflow is not gonna be as choked off here. This is a slim knock to a fan, and that'll attach directly to the top cover here. And that's pretty nice that you can still fit a case fan in here. Now, if I didn't use this pump res here, I could fit two uh, here and I'd fit the combo block here, but like, like I mentioned, the airflow here will be a lot more choked off. And you can see from the top down view, the power supply was already pretty much in the way here. All right, so this is how I've attached the fan. A little peculiar because on the T1 V2 on the sandwich version, the holes lined up to 120 millimeter fan holes. But this one actually is just a little bit off on these other two. So I was able to use a screw and washer, but here I had to use a little bit of double stick tape, which will be okay, but just a little bit odd. The heat fins on the cold plate are incredibly fine. So you really have to make sure your system is clean. Uh, the radiator ne needs to be perfectly flushed out. Everything needs to be clean. Otherwise this block, it's gonna clog really quickly. And I've noticed it's, it, it'll take a little bit more maintenance just keeping everything clean. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take it all apart because I've dry fit everything, clean out the tubing, clean out the radiator. And then this is the uh, sys prep from Primo Chill. This will run for about 12 hours. Put it back together, put the cabling on, and then we'll, uh, I'll show you how to fill it. Okay. So after mocking up the cabling, I think this one, this is the way to go with. So fan facing inwards, that kind of makes the cable run a little bit more optimal. And for the GPU, I did have to get a silicone cable because this is more flexible and that way the side panel can close up against this connector. 
right? So this is not a 12V HP DVR. This is just the old NVIDIA old. Um, this is just the last generation 12 pin connector that NVIDIA introduced. And it only needs, if you look at the adapter that the 3070 FE comes with, it only terminates in a single eight pin. So that's, um, it just takes up one of these. So you got two fill ports, one in the corner here, one in the corner here. They're not G quarter, okay? But you don't really need to get fittings for these. So you just need to unscrew them and then you can fill it that way. You can get the optional heat sink to keep your pump a little bit cooler. And that works out really well on the combo block. So I'm pretty confident in this working well in this system here too. And we'll see here just shortly. I'm trying out a new thermal paste on this build. This is Thermal Hero, extreme high performance. It's a big thanks then for sending it. Let's, uh, let's test it out. Pretty thick. I think what I'll do is uh, take a spatula to it and spread it just to make sure I get it even covered. And this tube was probably the most tricky bend because I had to bend it in place with the power supply here. I can get a good estimate, but it's so tight there that I almost needed to have the power supply in place to, to actually use the power supply as a kind of fulcrum to bend it around. I did try my best and put a piece of heat shrink here to prevent that corner from making too much of an indentation. So the tubing is intact support bar attached here but because i have the front panel off because i need to make the front connections I, it helps to just pop this here and that'll support the front end kind of a you know i guess special use for this gpu support button it'll, it'll work I'm just doing some cable management here one thing i want to do is secure down this power cable so it can be kind of running along the side here this little doohickey here can help route a zip tie. I want to attach it to the side here. Not sure if it's going to get too hot. We'll see what happens. I've pretty much zip tied everything down where it needs to be. First, that's what the side looked like. I got the fittings on here. And these will just slot right on to the side. Okay, because it is structural, structurally sound now, what I'm gonna do is just do a little bit of a, a leak test here. And usually you can tell right away as you're pumping it up if it's airtight or not, because it'll move pretty quickly if there is a leak. And it look, looks like we're pretty good here. But you can leave it on here for a few minutes just to make sure it doesn't have a slow leak in it. So I'm going to be filling through this port up here that I teed and that'll give us the easiest way to fill it. Now we're going to invert the system afterwards. So this will be facing the bottom. Right now we're letting gravity do the work. It'll flow down to here. Once we get the system mostly filled, then we can activate the pump because then that will help bleed out all the remaining air in the system. Then every now and then, we'll give it a little bit of a shake just to get things moving. That way the air can purge out through this port as well. You basically want to keep it slowly trickling in as the pump does the job of pushing the liquid through the system. Okay, so you got that pump running. You do want to be patient at this point because it could take a while for those air bubbles to bleed out. Keep on shaking it, just gently rocking it. And you want to be observing your tubing too if you have clear tubing just to make sure the air bubbles are moving. Because you can do it in this case, I just ended up taking off this crossbar for the time being while I fill the loop. That way I can access this little port here. Okay, that's the one of the fill ports. And one consideration, especially since the Loro is supposed to be used Mainly small form factor design with such a small res pump unit. That port may not be easily accessible for an Allen wrench like this. So thumb screw there would go a long way. I 
All right, so here's the build. It's filled and it's been running and I really like it. The Laura pump definitely makes this build possible with how low profile it is and how easy it is to run the tubing to that. And uh, definitely an improvement over something like this uh, EKFLT80 DDC. The loop was okay to fill through the T that I built in to the radiator fitting, but as it got full, it was harder to fill at that point. So then at that point, I took off this brace here and then filled into the port here. That made it accessible that way because you can take off this side brace and access the port that way. And I actually anticipate that as uh, this continues to run over the next few days, a little bit more air will bleed off into the reservoir and then I'll do one more top off there uh, from time to time. The Loro does seem to work okay mounted this way, but I'm almost certain after using it that it would be best if you mounted it so the pump is sitting on the side so that's maybe the intention there on how that pump is supposed to run i'm not sure what happens if you mount it the other way or you know if you flip the case around but i think this inversion allows this case fan to be at the top so that's pretty important and the pump because it's now facing up right and, and that's an okay configuration but uh, one thing i do wish is that there'd be a little bit more streamlined way to mount the fan and the pump like first off i noted holes didn't line up with this t1 reference top i'm not sure what that is because on the t1 v2 it did um, but then these screws they're a little bit unsightly i wish they were a little bit more concealable but at the end of the day they work fine 7600X works great. I did some simple tuning. It can work at 5.6 gigahertz on all cores. Probably just run it with curve optimizer. The thermals with a negative 30 offset. Uh, CPU is boosting to 5.45, 5.5 gigahertz on all cores here for the CPU render. It's drawing down only 84 watts. So temps with this block, they're actually pretty good. The fans are spinning at a paltry 950 RPM for a CPU heavy process. Coolant stays at 37 degrees at equilibrium, 38 degrees delta between the coolant and the block on PBO with its curve optimized settings, so it's not too bad. Uh, when we take a look at the manual all core OC, 106 watts PPT here, it's definitely toastier, that's expected. The delta gets a bit bigger, but in my experience, this is still fairly decent for Ryzen 7000 on a manual OC. For gaming, 1440p here, the coolant stays at 44 degrees while fans are at 1400 RPM. And I don't think the fans will need to run much faster beyond that to keep the coolant below 45 degrees in you know, a variety of ambient conditions. But you really do wanna keep things below 50 degrees for the coolant uh, because we're using PETG tubing here. So that Optimus block, I think it's pretty good. You probably can't get too much better than it. There is another a higher end on Optimus block uh, for AM5, um, but you probably don't need to get too much better than this. Uh, not necessarily for a 7600X anyway, but there is also an EK block that I, I'd like to also test at some point because in the past when I tested the velocity block against the Optimus, they're actually pretty similar. And um, yeah, so just curious there. Uh, one thing is with how fine the fins are on the Optimus blocks, you do need to keep up with your maintenance so it doesn't get clogged and then restricted. So we'll see how long that goes without a detriment to the performance. Uh, overall, I think this build was, at first was a little bit ambitious. Uh, but it turned out, all right, we have a 280, uh, not a thin rad, and you have full thickness, two 140 millimeter fans, a separate pump res over here, and to top it off, we used Hardline in a sub 10 liter case. Now, there was a little bit of a case mod required for the power supply mounting position, but I think the design of the T1 reference, it makes this possible. And the way you can take pieces off, you're basically building it into it and around it. And that really helps. So I hope you found that interesting. Uh, please give a like if so, and make sure you're subscribed. I'll leave some links down below for the components. And hey, thanks for watching.